Welcome to the season finale for the Youth Academy RTG. The FA Cup final is on the way, but we're not involved in that anymore. What we want to do is still lift a trophy, though. Currently, with three games to go, top of League One. However, Barnsley is single point behind. And if Derby win their game in hand, they'll only be two behind. And if Sunderland and Bolton win their games in hand, they'll only be three behind. We know, however... If we win all three of our games today, we will finish first. To add a little bit more madness to it, the games in hand for Sunderland, Derby and Bolton are being played after we've played our final game of the season. We play Portsmouth on the 10th of May and the games in hand are being played at the end of the month. So we're going to finish the season. Unless we've won all three of our games, we will cross our finish line two weeks before everyone else crosses theirs. So unless we get nine points, we are going to be clinging on for dear life to that top spot. Bristol Rovers at home to start, Exeter at home afterwards, and then Pompey away on the final day. Our final day. Not weirdly the final day, even though it should be, but it is what it is. Just FIFA things. We will try our damnedest to win all three, and as such, win the league. Championship football probably on the way next season, but at this stage, 100% not guaranteed. Drop the video a like if you think we can do it. Subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss out on what comes next season, and let's go and find out whether that is championship football or not. Bristol Rovers arrive with Chris Brady in goal. Halidor Stanovic Stenovic was very good against us last time we played them. They got three across the front line. A 4-3-3 that we hope to beat. We're at full strength, at full capacity. Kai Connick is back in the goals again after a little mini drought. Castro can find him here though. And Kai from the edge of the box. A little bit too much power on it and over the bar. But we've opened them up with our first attack. And that bodes well for the rest of the game. We have... The best home record in the league with 13 wins, 6 draws and 2 defeats. And it might be 14 wins if Kai can finish this. Which he can't. Two chances for the league's top goal scorer inside 8 minutes. Neither taken. Good possession football as well to maintain the ball at his feet. And Salinas has turned beautifully and on his left foot here. Salinas blocked. Connick couldn't have asked for a better opportunity. He might have missed two already. He's not missing that one. Presented to him on a plate. Kai, you got us one promotion. You might just have got us another. It was a resounding 5-1 win against Oxford United. Oh, we're so nearly 2-0 up in this one. We could be 4-5 or five up already in this one. Salinas, we are now 2 up in this one. It's becoming quite clear we are too good for this level. So we need to get up this season to ensure that we have the chance of a realistic championship season. We've bounced from League 2 to League 1 and probably to the championship in back-to-back in -back years. And to avoid the old FIFA issue of becoming too good for the league you're in every time you go up. I think if we get promoted this year, we won't have things all be like this in the championship. And it will actually be quite a challenge to perform at championship level. So, things going according to plan. We actually want the challenge at championship level. But at the minute, League One, we are beyond you. Corner for us, 64th minute. Isaac Morris will deliver. Deliver well and cleared away. Although... Edwards might have the chance to have a pop shot from the edge of the box. That'll be our... I see, he might keep that in. So that'll be our throw. But no, it's not even going to reach the sideline. Oh, nobody wanted to take a first touch there, apparently. 25 minutes to go here. Still 2-0 as Bristol Rovers haven't yet. Looked like they're going to get a goal back. And still they haven't. Stenovic won't get a better chance, though. That just opened up right in front of him. And he couldn't get it done. Samaras again out of his feet. And a shot... Ooh, and a decent save by Brady. Looking for a third. The decision to not accept the bid from Crystal Palace for Samaras was as controversial with the 
uh, YouTube comment section as I expected it to be. So I, of course, take all your opinions on board and understand the uh, constructive criticism you gave. I try my best to respond to uh, the majority of you in the comment section to try and put across my point in a bit more detail than I did in the brief highlight at, the, at that time. And hopefully you understand the decision we made. We do take every transfer decision on its merits at any given moment. And Salinas might be getting some interest in him in the summer because he's come into the club and done particularly well since doing so. That's 3-0. But certainly we're doing enough here so far today to ensure that the back-to-back -back promotion looks likely. A 3-0 scoreline here and a comfortable victory. And then two more to go. Barnsley lost. Barnsley lost. We're four points clear at the top of the table. We could win the league today. Although Bolton navigate. Yeah, I'll look at our goal difference. We're going to win the league today if we beat Exeter. And we can do it at home as well if results go our way. Let's do it today. Let's have results go our way. Well, you saw the league table on the lead up to this game. Barnsley are floundering at the end and might even not only challenge for the title, but may even fall into the playoffs with Derby and Bolton's games in hand. I didn't actually see how Sunderland were doing uh, off the top of my head, but it certainly looked, if I recall, Bolton and Derby were underneath Barnsley. So Sunderland may well have lost on the previous match day or perhaps only drawn when others won. Five at the back for Exeter. Jamal Blackman in goal. Of course, you'll remember him from his time at Chelsea and subsequent loan deals here, there and everywhere. I believe he might be at Exeter permanently now. Made some changes to my lineup as well for this one. Lavery is into the midfield. And uh, we've also brought Kennedy on at right back. Sorry, at right mid. And Logan Brown starts up top. And he's going to need to score some goals for me. Because we're 1-0 down. Our potential coronation day put on hold. Going to turn well and look for Kai. Oh no, it's Logan Brown, isn't it? I instinctively turn onto the left foot. Thinking I'd got Kai up top, forgetting I'd actually started Logan Brown for this one. What a leap by Lavery though. Morris just uses pace to get away. Brown looking for the pass to Salinas. And Jamal Blackman proving that he's going to be di more difficult to get the ball past than the Bristol Rovers goalkeeper. Castro with the corner from here. It's not the best of deliveries. Kennedy will bring that down. Kennedy! Comfortable for Jamal. As it happens, this is a brilliant move that could lead to an equalising goal if I could have found Salinas. We have found Kennedy! And Jamal Blackman with the save again. Kennedy seemingly getting better and better in front of goal at the minute. Well done, mate. Salinas is there. Unfortunately, Kennedy has just disappeared, but it does mean it's opened up for Logan. And here's Kennedy, who's finding his shooting boots. He really is. Jamal Blackman with a good save. And into Castro is making a good run. Oh, and Logan Brown can't miss from there. It's excellent movement from the youngster. We are level at home. We've got the crown out of the box now. We had put it away again. It might be today. Lovely floated ball by Novak. Out to Sparks. Good block by Kennedy. Corner Exeter. They're not giving up on this Exeter City. I'm not sure what they've got to fight for this season. I don't think much. But pride alone is keeping them in this game. And maybe even going ahead again. If it weren't for Ruben Richardson. Diving away to his top left-hand side. Kite to take the corner for them. And still they press to get themselves back in front again. We'd love to do it in front of our own fans. And not have to travel all the way down to the south coast for Portsmouth. To get the league title assured. We could certainly, I think, get promotion today. The title might have to wait. But again, we might end up waiting until other sides have uh, played their final game. But we know that if we win, it doesn't matter. And we're winning. Nicely to Castro. Had his shirt tugged there and the referee turned a blind eye. Next to looking to get themselves an equaliser before half time. And they might do, you know. Time is up for the half. But they're in the box. And Sparks draws the save. And the keeper needs to get up for this. Ben Jack clears away. And Isaac Morris... Put his body on the line and threw himself at that to ensure that we keep the 2-1 lead at the break. Nice ball by Kite out to Key. Can he unlock our defence? I mean, he's seemingly got a skeleton key because nothing I do stops him from getting through my back line. 
multiple changes being made here to freshen things up and try and hold on to what we've got as Exeter Press to try and get that equalising goal that would certainly ensure that we don't lift the title today. I didn't check to see what results were around the grounds at half time. So I'm not sure if we are doing what we need to. Well, we're doing what we need to, and what we can. We can't do much more. If other sides are doing what they need to to stay in touch with us, or whether a win here is enough with other teams' results to keep us top and ensure that we finish top. Clark works some space and off the bench. <laughs> oh, no. Misses a brilliant chance. Shank. Driven to Kennedy. Kennedy to Clark. It's opened up here. The exit to back line is wide open and it wouldn't be Coronation Day without a Kai Connick goal. 3-1 we lead now. Exeter will not be catching us. But can anyone else catch us in the league? We don't know yet. Footwork, good movement. Novak, good tackle by Castro. And that will be game. Well, it should be sooner rather than later. Nayef into the middle and away. Ref. If you don't mind now, judging by the cheers from the crowd, I think, oh no, they seem rather upset. There were cheers from the crowd. Oh no, the crowd, are, the crowd are visibly upset. The players are visibly delighted. I think we might be up, but have we won the title? I don't know. We'll find out in due course, because if there is a trophy celebration, it will come here. Our fans looked devastated there, didn't they? And they still do in the background. I think the Exeter fans are the ones that are actually going mad. <laughs> Unbelievable, Jeff. Oh, no, they're, they're singing now. Oh, they're singing Championi! Championi, Championi, ole, ole, ole. Other results have gone our way. We will win the League One title this year. We are going to the Championship. Evaristo Castro, excuse me voice, Evaristo Castro is the unlikely man to lift the trophy. Oh, hey! We've done it with a game to spare. I genuinely thought it would go all the way. And it hasn't. We've done it with one fixture left, so we do. Do. We do get to lift the trophy. <laughs> What's happening? We do get to lift the trophy in front of our own fans. So I'm pleased with that. Very pleased with that. And now, after the celebrations, we can head to Portsmouth and just have one final fancy dress day out. Technically, Bolton can still catch us. They're six points behind. Obviously, goal difference is significantly in our favour by 19. But mathematically, Bolton can catch us. So I think, technically... I shouldn't have been allowed to lift the trophy yet. I mean, I'm glad I was allowed to lift the trophy because it means that <laughs> we got to do it in front of our own fans. But mathematically, it isn't done. If I lose 9-0 and Bolton win 10-0, then we'll finish second. So we head into the final day then. Bolton absolutely can still get automatic promotion, as could Derby. If Barnsley can't see it through and games in hand go Bolton and Derby's way. Playoff picture, though, already assured. Nobody can catch MK Dons. Bradford, actually, have already played their 46th game. It's all over the place in the league this season. The bottom end of the table. Cambridge are not safe and have played 46. With two or even three games to go for clubs like Bristol Rovers. It hangs in the balance there. The picture is wide open. We had... Well, actually, we didn't relegate Exeter. They were already done and dusted by beating them there. Bristol Rovers, we didn't help, but they absolutely still could survive. And our next opponent, opponent Portsmouth, are mid-table with nothing to play for other than stopping me from increasing my advantage on the fan objective yet further. But crucially... Uh, we're going to get a couple of fan objectives done uh, with the results in this episode. So pleased with that. Let's have a quick look through these scout reports. That's going to be a no. And that is going to be a no. Can we end the season scout report wise with a worldie? It doesn't look like it. I mean, no luck here in this save, are we? Despite 
Fantastic luck in the Saints save. Maybe Noah Wyatt's gonna be all right in the end. Really, really unlucky at the minute. Noah Wyatt, center forward, who looks like a cam at best, but still not gonna be that great. But we will get the chance now that we're promoted, actually, won't we? To improve our youth scouts once more. So, maybe next season, we actually get some proper worldies. We'll wait and see. Up next, though, the final game of the season. It's Portsmouth away. And nice to actually, even at this third tier level, end the season at a proper real-life ground. Pompey with... Ola Nilsson in goal form. Colby Bishop up top is, as we always say, a very capable goal scorer at this level. It's either Accrington or Morecambe he was at previously. I can never remember which. Mizuta at cam slash centre forward was very good against us last time as well. And their number 24, who is starting there, as you can see him just there. He's retiring after today. So it's... Well, I don't want to spoil his party, his relic relegation party his retirement party but at the same time I, even though we've already won the title uh, well technically we haven't already won the title but we kind of have because of goal difference I would like to win all three of today's games to fully do what we said we needed to to get the result oh and Kai Connick only needs one more for 30 goals in league one as well so Hopefully, we'll get the victory. I apologise, Mr. Jacobs, but I I'm not here for your retirement party. We're here for our promotion party. Thank you very much. Lane to deliver. And away, hopefully, by Edwards. Ish. Well, that was fancy. Calm down, sir. He could even score a goal here, perhaps. Mizute. I think he did, actually, back at Patreon Park. I think it was Colby Bishop at Accrington and Cole Stockton was the one that was at Morecambe. I think they're the two players that I've been getting confused up top for League One level sides. Pompey. Pom Pompey. I don't know why I failed to say that about five times. Pompey actually having a very good start to the game. We're having to be alert defensively here, which if we were still challenging and needed a victory for that title, I'd, have, I'd be suitably concerned after 12 minutes. That we might be in for a really tough day. Lane, lovely back heel. Bishop. Ooh, awkward to deal with that for Ruben Richardson. Little daisy cutter skimming across the surface and caused the keeper all sorts of trouble. And they might score here. No, Jack's done well to win that header. It has been pretty much all Portsmouth in this game so far. I have had the ball up the other end a little bit. But we haven't looked likely to score a goal at any point so far today. Portsmouth are doing very, very well indeed. And despite not having anything to play for, all told, they're actually playing very well. They are one of the relegated sides from the Championship last year, so we should have expected quite a challenge. I think we drew against them last time we played them. And, well, on this evidence, we will only draw against them at best today. Boyle with a lovely little dink, that. Beautiful. Oh, dear. Mizuta and Jacobs... Surely not, and he's... Oh, he might get an assist. He should have gotten an assist on his final game. Colby Bishop, one-on-one, -on -one, penalty spot, straight at the keeper. Anywhere either side, and that certainly goes in, and there's nothing Ruben can do about it. He'd be furious at him, Jacobs. Can we get Kai in? Oh, no, no, we can't. Into Connick. Salinas is in here. Morris is arriving. Isaac Morris, our future star, still waiting to shine at his brightest. 77 rated now, Isaac Morris. Similarly, Ben Jack boils up to 75 as well. He's flown at left back. We have some Premier League level players at the club now. And I'm sure we'll get big bids in the summer. I'm certain of it. There's no way we can't, surely. We've been so lucky so far to not have any interest whatsoever in Boyle or Jack. At some point, that luck is going to run out into Kennedy. Oop, dip, dab. No, you don't. Spin him nicely. Look for Clark. Quickly. Kai for 30 for the season. No. Nilsson saves with nine to go. Kai does not have his goal. Caught on it as I was playing the pass and then given away as they were playing the pass. Clark. Kai. 
Run, Kai! Run! No! Who? Where have you come from, Towler? With seconds to go, Kai Connick looked to be played through one on one for the 30th goal. I just can't seem to get it to him. Portsmouth, the better team on the day. Neither, neither side able to get a goal. Neither side able to get a goal. We draw nil-nil. And thankfully, we didn't need victory to ensure the title. That mathematically on points will be the title. Because now Bolton definitely can't catch us up on points. He has run on Ruben Richardson to make a number of saves early on. Bolton draw nil-nil to Lincoln anyway. So we have definitely won the title regardless of whether we'd lost that game. Well, there's still games to play in the... Uh, League One table, Barnsley and Bolton and Derby and Sunderland all still vying for that second spot. I've played my game earlier than everybody else. Well, let's advance to the end of the season then. And you guys can see exactly what's been going on with every competition we've been involved in and everything else throughout the, uh, the save. And of course, we'll have a look at our squad and the youth squad and the Patreon players too. I shall see you in a moment. And I'm going to try and sort my voice out in the meantime. No. Maybe. No. Well, now that we're going up to championship level as well, we will be starting to scout outside of the UK as well. We're going to start scouting Europe for the first time now that we're up at championship level. William Rowland. I mean, actually, with 66 finishing, looks like he's a striker, doesn't it, rather than a winger. He's not got much pace. Let's try and change him central and see what happens to him there. So we will be scouting in Europe for the first time as we push forward into the new season. The scouts will be replaced. We'll recall them all here. And we will be looking to sign new talent from Pastures and New. I'll still scout in England, but we will be looking for talent from Pastures and New as we press further forward. I'll get my new scouts in between now and season four. And whilst we're on the 9th of June, let's show you what happened elsewhere, elsewhere around the, oh my God, around the leagues. Derby promoted and finished second and will join us in the championship, our local rivals. What a party that's going to be. Sunderland, Bolton, Barnsley, who dropped to fifth at the end of the season and MK Dons in the playoffs. Barnsley bottled it well and truly at the bottom end of the table Cambridge survive Bristol Rovers Forest Green Wigan Athletic and Exeter City relegated hopefully that's where Cambridge finish in real life this season Emirates FA Cup Aston Villa 2-1 against Tottenham <clears throat> my voice hasn't recovered evidently uh, Carabao Cup Manchester United 2-1 against Liverpool Papillon's Trophy. Sunderland over Derby. No double for Derby County. And Barnsley do get themselves up by winning the playoffs. Thank God for that, Barnsley fans, eh? UEFA Super Cup, Barcelona 1, Manchester City 0. In the Champions League, Chelsea win on penalties over Barcelona. They don't win the Champions League for back-to-back -back seasons. Newcastle win the Europa League, so irregardless of their league position they will be in the Champions League next year and the Europa Conference League is lost by Arsenal by three goals to one to Athletic Club de Bilbao congratulations Athletic right let's have a look at player stats so Kai Connick couldn't quite get the 30 but did get 29 in 45 golden boot in league two tick golden boot in league one tick will he actually be any good in the championship don't know, question mark. Uh, any other AFC Chesno players in that list? Salinas is probably close to it, to be fair. I think he got 10 goals. So he nearly made it onto the list, despite only joining us in uh, in January. Edwards, 15 assists. GG, sir. Connick there with nine as well. So obviously a great season for him. Castro with seven. So despite being one of the lowly rated players, still very good for us. And clean sheet wise, Richardson with 10 in 21 since joining in January. Welcome back, sir. If you double that, he would have kept the clean, the uh, golden glove for this year if he played the full season. You never know what's going to happen at championship level. With regards, other leagues around England in the Prem. Manchester City by two points from Manchester United in third. 
Arsenal fourth, Spurs, Chelsea, Newcastle seventh, but will be Champions League, of course, because they won the Europa League. So European spots going uh, not where you would have expected to some Premier League sides. We will be playing next year Bournemouth, Watford and Fulham as they get relegated to the Championship. We will not be playing next year Nottingham Forest or Crystal Palace. We may well be playing three of Burnley, Middlesbrough, Bristol City or Sheffield United as they battle it out for a place in the Premier League next, next season. We will not be playing Charlton, Birmingham or Coventry as they all drop a division and go down to League One. Promoted from League Two, a Doncaster, Cheltenham and Burton with Swindon, Stockport, Leighton, Orient and Gillingham battling it out for a playoff winning spot. And Newport and Barrow relegated to the National League. Newport on 46 points compared to Carlisle's 46 points. But Newport's goal difference minus seven worse off. Barrow on 43 points. Obviously you can't quite see that with the screen as it looks right there. In League uh, it's PSG by 11 points from Lyon. In the Bundesliga it's Bayern by four from Leipzig. In Italy... It's Juventus by two from Napoli and Inter. In the Eredivisie, Ajax from final by just two points. In the Liga Portuguesa, it's Benfica by a single point. Tight title fights everywhere, it seems. Rangers on goal difference ahead of Celtic. Wow. And in La Liga, Barcelona by seven. One of the biggest gaps we've seen from Real and then Atletico Madrid in third. Valencia fourth, and they're actually... Uh, threatened with relegation in real life uh, Valencia and I'm told by my Twitch chat indeed PSG unbeaten for the season congratulations to them so quickly the objectives both board and fan with regards to the board uh, we were able to get one of the youth we didn't do the uh, the other one we were in uh, we still got another season to do that although it is unlikely of course Brand exposure wise, we didn't sign a crucial player to a forward position, but that's not a problem. Uh, financially, we didn't do that either. Domestic success though, fight for promotion. How about the title, lads? And the FA Cup is neither here nor there. As a League One side, we're never really going to reach the round of 16, are we? Uh, with regards fan objectives, of which of course will be updated for next season, uh, we didn't take eight points from our four Derby games. Two against Derby, two against Cambridge. A win and a draw against Derby. A win and a defeat against Cambridge. That defeat to Cambridge ultimately kept them in the division. And for the last time, no, I don't let Cambridge beat me. If you think I genuinely risk my own promotion just to let a fictional Cambridge United win in a video game, you are mistaken. We did, however, lose less than 15 games at league level. We only lost seven in the whole season. No perfect hat-trick, unfortunately, though we did come close twice. Michael Asantes, one of scored 10 goals from set pieces, only six this year. Mitch didn't get as many goals. We didn't trail that often to turn it around into a winning position. And with the three relegated sides from the championship, we took six points. Three draws. No. I think just... We got one win. And... Four, three draws, I think. And two defeats. I think we might... No, actually, we might have just drawn them all. I think we drew them all. I think we did. Six games against the three sides. I think we drew them all. Until my brain couldn't figure out how many games were played there for a minute or how many points I got from each or what the results were. So, the youth squad. We've got a handful of players in here. The best is Stanley Lyons, who does have great potential. So he'll come up and go out on loan next year. Wyatt, I'm unsure he's the latest arrival. Clarkson, his window is low, so I'm probably just going to release him. Roland uh, looks all right. We'll change him to striker, and hopefully he can grow quite well. He looks, he looks quite all-round physically, and finishing is decent, so there might be something there. And MacArthur, similarly, might be something there too, although technically he is a little way behind. But hopefully with our improved scouts next season... We will do better on that front. With regards to players we have at the club now, Richardson joined us again and went up three. Houghton will be our backup goalkeeper next year as Cunningham's contract expires. Boyle is up six this year to 75. Great growth from him. Austin leaves us. 
Backer up two and two only. Jack up six. Bugger. He's Premier League quality for sure, isn't he? Maxwell, Murphy and Gibbons all growing by two, six and four respectively. Also up for Duncan McMillan, who will be the Jude Austin replacement effectively. I'm expecting to lose Ben Jack in, January, in the summer. I just don't think we'll be able to keep him. Barry Knox up six at right back, 68. He is basically a season behind uh, Boyle, isn't he, effectively? So he'll be very good in a year's time. Hutchison's up three. Lavery's up two. Owen Kane leaves us. He's rubbish. Isaac Morris up four. Still potential to be special and still somehow here at the club, but hopefully will uh, stay, but may well leave. He's Premier League quality now as well, of course. Fleming might be a replacement for him. Up two. Stanley Evans is leaving us at the end of the season. Thank you for your service, Stanley. Jenkins is up five. Still got potential of late 80s, but just doesn't want to grow. Samaras up four. Castro up four. Pearson up four. Clark up four. Nesbitt leaves us. McDonald up three. He would have been 66 as well, though, had he been up four. Kennedy up just the two. Now replaced in the starting lineup, of course, because of the arrival of Salinas. Kean McCloskey is a player that could very well grow quite nicely. So he may well find himself on loan next year. And fingers crossed, will grow well. Hogg will leave us next season. In fact, he's retiring, so he won't play for anyone next year. Lawrence up 11 this season. He does look like he could be pretty good already, to be honest. I think he's actually better than the 67 portrays. But with a bit better dribbling and ball control, he should rock it next year again. Edwards up six this season. Very, very good for us. McLean up nine this season, although with a position change, not as technically advanced as Lawrence at all. Uh, Park, I think, leaves us, does he? He might only have a year left. He does have a year left. Brown up eight this year. Kai has peaked, but we hope that dynamic potential kicks in next year and we can grow him again. He will keep the starting spot for the time being. Sorry, Logan. Ross comes up with great potential. We'll wait and see. Salinas up three to 70 since we bought him in January. And 10 goals and five assists in that cam roll, or centre forward roll, in 16 games. He's ready for championship football, isn't he? And then Gavin Young, who's gone out on loan every season, still slowly making his way towards being a League Two level player. Well, I don't know what's going to happen next year. With transfers, with league position. All we know is we will be in the championship. One final look at the Patreon players for this save this season. Of course, you guys may well be making moves uh, next season as well. Jordan Forbes is still at Dusseldorf 81. Will and Jamie both at 80. Rob 74 with Nick 76, the two fullbacks. Connor 76, 76 and Tommy Wallace 77 at centre back. Juric, I think, is a. Uh, what's his face? Ivan Perisic uh, regen, but uh, we'll remove him from the shortlist. Tristram and Williams both at 75 in their respective clubs. Daniel is 79 as a winger. I don't think Rashid Hassan is going to be good enough. We could probably find better at centre mid. Um. Speaking of centre mids, uh, Dawson, White and Underwood, all 79 rated at their clubs. Millie, 78. Sepulveda might be an option, although technically still not that great. Although it's probably better than Castro. I don't know, actually. Brandon is 78 rated. Liam is 79. AJ only 77 at the moment. Charles is definitely not good enough at this stage, unfortunately, for him. So he's leaving the shortlist. Daz Young at 80. Manu at 79, the two right wingers. And then when it comes to strikers, Aiden and Ferenc Puskas at 81. And Kyle, Wimpenny and Davison at 80. Davison was on loan this year from Bayern Munich. And with regards to left wingers, Barnes Cutter has grown much better than Colin at 78. So we'll see where everybody ends up after next season's first transfer window. But this season is done and dusted. Thank you for your support, of course. Hopefully, of course, you will join me tomorrow for the reveal of our new kits for Season 4, for the reveal of our new fan objectives for Season 4, for the reveal of our new ground for Season 4. We added a stand at the same ground from League 2 to League 1 as we move to the Championship. 
we will be building a new stadium and moving grounds. Aiming for top half in the championship. We'll wait and see what happens. Thank you for your support as ever. I'll see you tomorrow.